Howdy everyone and welcome back to The More You Grow. I am trying to enjoy this cold day outside here in the greenhouse, getting some things ready for the spring. One of the things I'm doing right now is getting some fig tree cuttings ready for the farm, hopefully to plant this coming spring. Figs are one of my favorite fruits of all time. If you've never had a fresh fig, it's nothing like you'll ever experience. It's like a mixture of strawberries and sugar all mixed together, depending on the variety you get. And they're just something I absolutely enjoy. They're not a fruit you can normally get in the grocery store fresh, just because they only last about a day once they're picked. So it's one of those things, if you want to have that to enjoy for you and your family, it's something you need to grow for yourself. And here in this video, I'm gonna show you how easy it is to grow your very own fig tree from cuttings, how to get those started, how to care for them, and then what to do along the way when we go to get them planted. So let's go check it out. So I have to start off this video with a huge thank you to the Texas boys for sending over some fruit tree cuttings that I'm really excited to share with y'all in this video today, what they are, and to get those ready for the farm. If you haven't seen the Texas boys before, you gotta go check out their YouTube channel. They always have really great content, always doing something new and really exciting, so you should go check them out there. And they've even just launched their own website just recently where they sell a lot of the products they're creating, they're wanting to sell some more products as they bring them along. And you can get things like fruit tree cuttings, which they have given me some here that I'll share with you. And so you can check out all those on the texasboys.com. So let's get into what they sent me and let's talk about what each one of these are gonna look like and what they're good for. So let's talk about that. So the Texas boys have sent me an assortment of fig trees and some other things. So the first thing we have here is a Celeste fig. These are all probably one of my all time favorite figs. These are my first ever fig that I've ever tried. And it's what got me hooked on figs in the first place on how good they are. I gotta tell you, I have quite a few going on at my house, but I have nothing compared to Texas dad over at the Texas boys. He's got probably like 40, 50, I don't know how many varieties of figs. I give him a hard time about it all the time, but he's got more fruit trees than I'll ever own in my life. But this is Celeste. Again, it's a really great fig. It's got a really nice sweetness to it. Kind of got a brownish outside skin to it. You can eat the whole thing. It's lovely. So another variety they have sent me that I've not tried before and I don't know much about but I'm really excited to get started is the LSU Tiger Figs. Those are going to be something new to me so I don't know much about their flavor but from what I've read they're going to be a really good variety. I'm really excited for these here. They've also sent the LSU Purple. I love the purple color of these. These are going to be really awesome I think and really excited to see how they turn out and he threw in there a couple of Primark Freedom blackberries. I love me some blackberries and I've got multiple varieties coming up that I'm going to share with you once they come in but I wanted to add these to it and I appreciate y'all sending over those Primark Freedoms to see how they do. They're really cool because unlike other blackberry varieties they're able to produce on the Primacane. What the way blackberries work is they have something called the primacane. So the first year canes, those are going to be the ones that don't produce fruit that year. It takes two years for a cane to produce fruit. Then the next year that primacane becomes something called a floricane. So produces flowers and fruit. And after that point, you can cull those out because they will be less productive. So primacanes, they're just the first year canes and then the flora canes are the fruiting canes, but prime art freedom are able to produce on the prima canes, which is actually really cool. I'm excited to see how that works. So what we need to do now is to get, take these cuttings and we need to turn them into trees. So let's talk about how we do that. So here's the steps I like to use to get my cuttings rooted. And I will start by saying this isn't the only way to do it. There's lots of different methods out there. I know the Texas boys use a different method than I do and it works very, very well for them. So you can check out their method as well. I'm sure they got some videos on it somewhere. If not, I'm sure they'll make some videos. And just saying that there's not just one way of doing this. There's a lot of different ways, but I'm gonna show you how I've always got my cuttings rooted and it's always worked really well for me. So what I have here is just a pot, a one gallon pot with a 50-50 mix of potting soil and perlite. 
That's going to give us good drainage. It's going to give us good porosity, good airflow, things like that. Perlite is just this kind of expanded material that gives us good drainage and it holds on to moisture really, really well. So the first thing I do is I take my cutting here. I've got one of our LSU Tigers and I like to give a fresh cut to the bottom at a 45 degree angle. So something like this. So I give it a fresh cut so that opens it up because what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of wet down the bottom of this cutting and I'm going to dip it in some rooting hormone. This isn't necessary. This isn't 100% something you have to do. It's something that just helps to speed up your root growth. So you just put a little bit of this rooting hormone on the bottom of your cutting and you can see here all these buds are ready to go. There's so many buds on these. These are excellent cuttings. So once you've made your 45 degree angle cut and you've got your rooting hormone on, if you choose to use that, some people do not like to use it. It's all just a preference. But when you take that, you'll just take your cutting and I like to kind of poke a hole for it first. I'll just kind of use my finger, kind of poke a hole for it. So we're going to break off all the rooting hormone and I'm going to place it in this pot like so. So that is going to give it some good depth to where we have a good surface area that's below the soil that will become the roots and we have a good surface area above. So what I love about putting cuttings into a pot like this is I can put multiple cuttings into one pot and keep up with one pot rather than multiple small pots. So I'm going to take these and do the same thing. So one thing you want to check on your cuttings as well, which way is top and bottom. With this one, it's very easy. You can see that you have a top and bottom there. But if you have a cutting that is cut on both sides, you want to make sure that you've got it going up the right direction. The best way to do that is look at these buds. You see how they're pointing upwards? That means this is the bottom. So we have multiple buds on here and they're all facing this way so again take your cutting 45 degree angle that's going to give us the best surface area for water intake and for absorption of this fruiting hormone so i'm just kind of dip it around again and what i like to do just as a pro tip here is i put my rooting hormone on a plate rather than dipping it out of the container you don't want to contaminate your rooting hormone if your plant you have a sick plant or you got one that's got a disease you don't want to transfer that to other plants so I put what I need onto a plate of some kind or some kind of flat surface and then I can dip that into that cup or that plate so I'm going to put that in there like so and just continue on until we have a full pot here so once you have as many cuttings as will fit or as that you would like into the pot what I then do is I take just a shopping bag of some kind. I like to reuse and recycle as much as I can. So just a shopping bag. You can use other materials other than this. And then I put this over the top like so. Just to where you create kind of a tent. You don't want it just right down on top of the cuttings, but you want it to just come right off the top of them just a little bit. Take you a rubber band. Go from the bottom of the pot. Let's see if I can do this here. So you go from the bottom of the pot. Kind of lift up just a little bit. That way the rubber band is all the way around the bag. Make sure it's all down in there. That will just keep it from blowing off or coming off accidentally. And this is going to create a makeshift humidity dome. You want to keep as much humidity as you can for your cuttings. You don't want them to dry out because they don't have a root system to replace the water that they're losing. They're still losing water as they are alive, but they don't have a way of replacing it just yet. So. You want to make sure you create a nice 
bit of humidity for them and that will keep them from drying out. So all I'm gonna do now is leave this on here, periodically check on them, make sure everything's okay. We wanna make sure there's not any kind of mold or anything like that. If that's the case, we gotta make some adjustments with the moisture and the humidity, things like that. But for the most part, this has worked very, very well for me, just doing like this. So now that we have these potted up and we have our makeshift humidity dome over the top to keep that humidity in, we're just gonna play the waiting game. So we're gonna wait a couple of weeks or just until they start producing their own roots. And once they have some good established roots, we're gonna give them their own pots to grow out a little bit in. You could go directly plant them, but what I would recommend more is if you're going to grow them indoors in pots like this, you wanna give them some time to get established in their own container and then you want to start acclimating them outside when it's time to start planting them outdoors in the spring. So acclimating them to the sun, the wind, things like that, they can end up going through shock if you just put them out there directly if they're not used to the outdoor conditions. So that's just a word of advice from experience there. So if you don't have a greenhouse to put these in, you can put them in something like a window seal. Just make sure it doesn't get too cold in that window. I would recommend if you have it, putting down something like a heat mat or a seedling mat underneath these to get some warmth for those roots. And that usually works pretty well if you don't have a greenhouse to put them in. So that's about it, guys. There's really not a lot to growing of tree from cuttings. Figs are one of the easiest to grow. There's other trees that you can grow from cuttings that I'll talk about along the way. But if you have any more questions for me, you can leave it out in the comments on any of the steps that I did or if you have any suggestions for future videos that you'd like to see, be sure to leave those in the comments. If you like this video, be sure to go hit that like button. If you haven't done so yet, be sure to subscribe to the channel, go check us out on Facebook and Instagram, and hit that bell icon for notifications. And until next time, I hope you'll join me right here on The More You Grow.